All right, I think we're recording. Good morning, friends. I hope that you um, had a good Monday. I'm getting ready to upload the next chapter of the Mighty Miss Malone. There were some issues yesterday, um, so I will be uploading that as soon as I upload this video as well, so that you can simultaneously work on both. And then um, the next chapter I will upload at five o'clock tonight. So you can see I'm wearing baseball earrings. Got my Cincinnati Reds cup. I'm missing baseball today. Very much. Mr. Keller and I are going to watch some baseball movies today. Try to tie us over. All right. Without further ado, um, yesterday during the Zoom meeting, we talked about picture graphs. And picture graphs is something that you um, briefly worked on in first grade. So the lesson today I'm going to focus on is bar graphs, which is just basically removing the pictures and um, replacing them with a different way to record data. And I thought we could introduce it today with the brain pop video, because I'm not sure if it was working for everybody yesterday. And you might, you know, have forgotten your uh, lunch number or, or anything to that effect. Um, but you can find your lunch number on progress book if you're signed up for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share screen. We'll watch the brain pop. I will show you how to make a bar graph with, um, you know, a paper and using data. And then uh, I will give you your challenge today, which will be to use technology since it's technology Tuesday to practice line graphs if you should choose to do so. Go ahead and share. And we're going to start here. And I'm sure it'll ask me to sign in again. Where should we go on our next class trip? The zoo, the firehouse, or the apple orchard? I'm taking a survey and making a tally chart. <laughs> what are surveys and tally charts? A survey is a list of questions used to collect information or opinions. Let's see. There are three dinosaurs here. Let's take a survey to find out which one our classmates like best. We can use a tally chart to record data or information. Let's see, Moby likes the Stegosaurus the best. You can draw one tally mark to stand for one vote. It's like the Triceratops. So I'll draw five tally marks in that row. One, two, three, four. The fifth mark is drawn across the other four. Well, when you group the tally marks by fives, you can count by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, sets of fives are easier to count. Hmm, seven kids like the T-Rex. So after I draw five tally marks, I can add two more to make seven. Oh, right. I forgot to vote. My favorite dinosaur is the Triceratops. I'll add a tally mark to that row. It's really easy to add to tally charts. Now I can count the votes and use the tally chart to make a bar graph. What is a bar graph? A bar graph is a way to organize and show data. You can write the categories on the bottom. The three dinosaurs are the categories. Then you can write the numbers on the side. The numbers in our bar graph show how many people voted for each dinosaur. Let's see, one student liked the Stegosaurus the best. So I fill in one square. Six people voted for the Triceratops, so I color in six squares. Notice how to organize her data 
instead of using pictures like you would in a, in a picture book graph, she's choosing to use different colors. That's a great um, way to organize your data when using a bar graph. Also, the reason it's called a bar graph is because you're coloring in, you know, one bar on the graph for every vote that that item um, received. Seven people said the T-Rex was their favorite dinosaur. You can also put the categories on the left and the numbers on the bottom. You can display the same information in a different way so you can understand it better. How can you use bar graphs to understand information? Bar graphs help you answer questions. Which dinosaur did people in our class like the best? Right, the T-Rex is the most popular. Which dinosaur did people like the least? Hmm, the Stegosaurus got five fewer votes than the Triceratops. You can even use the bar graph to figure out the total number of students who voted. Votes from each category. 14 kids voted in all. Now I'm almost done with the survey on where to go for our next class trip. So far, the zoo is the most popular. It has 16 votes. But I don't have your vote yet, Moby. Where do you want to go? <laughs> the moon? I don't think the bus will get us there. Billy Moby. Let's go ahead and take that easy quiz. Just real quick. All right. Start. Let's take a look at this graph here. Um, again, like she said in the video, a way to collect data, and I know that you guys have done this at indoor recess before, is to tally um, every time someone votes for a particular category. So here they're being surveyed on their favorite fruits. Their options were apple, orange, or grapes. Take a look at the chart that shows grapes. How many people How many liked grapes the best? Now remember, when you have a bundle of tallies like this, it's worth five each. So we can skip count. Five, 10, 11. 11 people liked grapes the most. And favorite sport. Notice how um, this bar graph is angled from left to right. Sometimes bar graphs can be um, drawn this way. They can also be flipped uh, up and down rather than across, which I'll show you later. How many people liked soccer more than baseball? So because this is a sideways bar graph, what you're going to need to do is look at the categories here on the left, baseball, soccer, and basketball, and then um, the number of votes that that category got is going to be on the bottom this time, okay? So how many people how liked soccer more than baseball? So it's not asking you how many people like soccer. The answer is not going to be seven. It's asking you to take that information Notice that it's seven. You can even write it down. Seven people liked soccer. How many people liked baseball? Three. Shame on them. Three people liked baseball. Okay. Then what you'll need to do is you'll need to subtract how many people liked baseball from how many people liked soccer. How many people, more people liked soccer than baseball? Your answer is four more people. Good job. How do you group tally marks together? So at what point do you bundle tally marks? Is it by ones? That'd be confusing. Twos, threes, or fives? Fives.
what do tally charts and bar graphs have in common? So what is similar between a tally chart and um, a bar graph? Do they both use tally marks? No. One uses um, uh, bars to record information. They both do not need titles. Actually, on, on a bar graph, you really should have a title. And really, if you're going to be collecting data using a tally chart, you should probably have a title on that too so you don't forget what you're recording. Both show data, definitely. Um, it'll show you how many votes um, people surveyed got in a tally chart. And similarly, on a bar graph. Do they both show bars? No, D reminds me a lot of A, where tally marks are used on a tally chart and bars are used on a bar graph. So I think our best bet is C. Both of them do show a set of data. Good job, guys. Last question. How do you show the number 12 with tally marks? Okay, this is another one where you can either count individually, however, skip counting is going to be quicker and it's going to be more efficient. So remember, bundles are fives. So we have one bundle here and we have two additional tallies. So that would be five, six, seven. Nope, that's not 12. We have two bundles here, okay? So we can skip count. Five, 10, okay? And then um, C, let's skip count. 5, 10, 11, 12. Ooh, I think that's gonna be our answer. Let's just double check. It's always important to check all answers, all options. 5, 10, 15, 16, 17. That's too high. C is our answer. All right, good job, guys. We got five out of five. Do your Moby dance. Awesome job. All right, before we make our own bar graph, using technology for technology Tuesday. I'm going to attempt to show you what I'm working on here. I did a survey of my family members. Those who do not live with me, I called up on the phone so that I could ask them. And I asked them about their favorite zoo animals with our um, virtual field trip coming up and our writing research project coming up. I thought that would be a, a good one. So their options were elephant, lion, hippo, leopard, and meerkat. I used tally marks just like she did in the video on brain pop to record my data. So let's count these up together. How many people liked elephants the most? One, two, three. Three people liked elephants the most. How many people liked lions the most? One, two. Two people liked lions the most. Now this is no surprise to us, living in Cincinnati with baby Fiona at our zoo. How many people liked hippos the most? Instead of counting individually, you can, um, Take advantage of the fact that we have a bundle here and just skip count. Five and no additional. So we know five people prefer the hippo. Leopard. How many votes did that get? One sad little vote. And lastly, meerkat. Do you see any tallies there? No, unfortunately, Meerkat got zero votes. Now that I have my values for each set of um, animals, what I can do now is I can make my bar graph. I'm going to draw A square. I have one, two, three, oops, sorry. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five animals. So I'm going to divide my square and I prefer to look at bar graphs up and down. So we're gonna do up and down bar graph like I was talking about earlier, unlike the example in the video. So I'm going to draw 
five, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. If you mess up, that's okay. Just cross off the extras. It happens sometimes. What do you think a good title for our bar graph would be? Well, what was the question I asked? I asked my family members, what are their favorite animals at the zoo? The title of my bar graph can be favorite zoo animals. Okay. Now our animals were elephant, lion, hippo, leopard, and meerkat. In the example in the video, they had pictures for each category, and you can do that as well. I just don't want to take up your time and try to draw each of these animals. Now, how high of a vote did we get um, from my family members for favorite zoo animals? The number of votes did not exceed five, so it's always a good idea to um, write your data set, your um, scale going higher than your highest um, voted category so that it's easier to see the difference between the different votes. So I'm going to make my scale 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Even though it only went up to 5. Okay. We have zero down here, which means I don't even have anything colored in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight at the top. Okay. Obviously, this isn't beautiful, but it doesn't have to be beautiful. It's going to show um, a data set. Elephant was our first option. How many votes did elephant get? Three. I am going to choose for elephant, let's choose this pretty blue color. And I'm going to color and I'm going to try to show you. Here's elephant. I'm going to color one, two, three. Three categories. Sorry, three bars worth. This shows me that elephant got three votes. Now let's think about the lion. How many votes did the lion get? The lion got two votes. I'm gonna use orange for the lion. Here's the lion, zero, one, two. You probably have done bar graphs before without even realizing it. I'm sure in first grade you did, um, you know, some kind of a fun game, maybe during uh, a class party where you had like a bag of Skittles or M&Ms or something like that. And then you had to record coloring in on a bar graph, the different colors that were in your package of candy. That's a pretty common party game. So if you've done that before, you are actually recording data on a bar graph. Next we have the hippo. Good old Fiona. Hippo got five votes. Hopefully uh, you're not getting seasick from all this camera moving. 
Hippo, I'm gonna use purple, of course. Hippo got five votes, so we have one, two, three, four, five. Five votes for the hippo. Great. Next is our leopard. And our leopard has one vote. I'll use red for leopard. Leopard got one vote. Here's something that I notice is tricky for us to realize, and it, we even got tricked on it yesterday during our Zoom meeting. Our meerkat got zero votes. Are we going to be able to color on this bar graph at all for meerkat? No, you're going to color nothing. It got zero votes. Something that can help you read on a bar graph the data even uh, better giving you an easier time to read it, is to record the number of votes on top of that highest point on that category's bar. So one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. I'm trying to think of how to do this upside down right now. Sorry if that's backwards. One, my brain doesn't really work like that. <laughs> and Meerkat got zero just to help you see it easier. It's not something you have to do, but it's something that can be helpful. Next, let's ask some questions about this bar graph. What were my family members' least favorite zoo animal of the ones they were given? It's not going to be leopard. Leopard did get a vote. What didn't get any votes was the meerkat the least favorite, and I'm gonna have to flip this around. The least favorite was the meerkat. It got zero votes. What was my family's favorite zoo animal? Looking at this graph, you can see that the hippo got five votes, which was um, at least two votes higher than the other animals. So my family's favorite was the uh, hippo. Were there any ties, meaning did any animals get the same number of votes? No. All of them got a different number of votes, so you can say no. And then how many family members did I survey? What are we gonna have to do to figure this out? You're going to simply add all of the votes together. So I'm going to add Three votes plus two votes plus five. Here we go again with the five. I think that's going to be backwards. I'm so sorry. My brain doesn't work like this. Five votes plus one vote plus zero votes. What we need to do is what I've taught you to do all year. A bodybuilder has to have his weights evenly distributed or her weights evenly distributed. So you split them up. This barbell goes on one arm, this barbell goes on another arm. We can cancel out the zero. It's not gonna make a difference, it's zero. What's two plus three? Two plus three is five. What's five plus one? Five plus one is six. Five plus Six equals eleven. How many family members did I survey? I surveyed eleven. Don't forget your label, people. Okay. I have my tally chart with my data. I have my bar graph that I created. I answered the questions. What were 
we're going to do now is I'm going to actually pause you so that I can um, either call or message some of my friends and I'm going to survey my friends to see um, who, what sport, let's do sports since I'm, I'm missing baseball today, uh, what their favorite sports are. Uh, and then we'll come together and we'll work on a line graph together using technology and I'll send uh, the link to that website out so that you can try it at home as well. Okay, so I'm going to pause this and I'm going to give them a call. All right, guys, I am back. Surveyed my friends for their favorite sports. The, this time I let them tell me their favorite sports and then I base the categories based on what they told me. So our categories are baseball, soccer, basketball, hockey, and football. Okay. So let's go ahead and share my screen. Let's go to, ah, where'd it go? Make a bar graph, please. There we go. Okay. What should we make the title of this bar graph? We should make the title of this bar graph favorite sports. Okay. Don't worry about the X and Y. It's just basically asking us what do you want to label them. Okay. So um, I'm going to label, let's see. And categories are baseball, soccer. basketball, hockey, and football, okay? And I'm going to go, the values of eight. Oh, I see, okay. So our values, how many votes did baseball get? Baseball got, can you see that? Baseball got eight votes. That made me so happy. Okay. How many votes did soccer get? Soccer got one vote. What about basketball? Basketball got Three votes, yep. How many votes did hockey get? Hockey got one vote. And then lastly, football, how much does it did it get? Football got three votes as well. Okay. So the program that I used earlier was not this program. Um, so that makes me kind of sad. Oh, you can change the colors. Cool. Um, I would prefer if the bars were obviously <laughs> coloring in these bars and not along the line. Um, and also this doesn't feel very user friendly for second graders. So I am going to try to find the website that I found earlier that I like better. And I'm so sorry I couldn't show it to you on our video today, um, but I will send that out on GroupMe so that you are able to use something that's more user-friendly and more, um, more user-friendly for second graders. So in summary, similarly to a picture graph, a bar graph represents a data set. So usually, going to be based on a survey and I know you love surveying your friends at indoor recess. So favorite sports, favorite genre of music, favorite um, zoo animal. Your number of people surveyed is going to be represented on this graph because you can add eight, one, three, one, and three together to find out how many people you surveyed. And then um, you can see how many votes each category in your survey received. So baseball got eight, soccer one vote, 
basketball three votes, hockey one vote, and football three votes as well. So hopefully this was helpful to you. Um, I definitely prefer teaching in the classroom. It's a lot more natural. It's a lot easier to show you, um, you know, notes that I'm taking or activities that I'm doing here. Definitely miss being in the classroom with you. Um, I was able to verify about half of our classes addresses last week and I'm going to continue working on that when I get off of here and upload my name is Malone and our math lesson for today and then I'll continue working on verifying addresses so that I can send out my postcards to you and I already have our end of the year gifts made that I can't wait to deliver to you here in the upcoming weeks. Also Mr. Hustle sent something out via Reminds today, the Remind app if you have that. Um, and I was asked to pass it along to you, so I'm going to also post that in GroupMe. Um, I think that that's just about it for today. It is beautiful out. I thought it was going to rain all day, so make sure that you take an opportunity and go outside today. I think I'm going to see if I can convince Mr. Keller to go play tennis with me. I think that today is an awesome tennis day. Clear skies, not too windy, beautiful out. All right. Well, I hope you have a fantastic day. I miss you so much. Love you. And I will see you tonight at five o'clock for the Mighty Miss Bloom. Bye.